Hello guys, I am very happy to introduce to you my comparison between KTM 1290 Super Adventure R and the Honda Africa Twin 1100 in Adventure Sports and DCT setup with electronic suspension, so ES. The KTM is an R variant, so one with larger wheels, taller suspension and other differences from its brother, the S variant. And I'm explaining all the differences between these KTMs and also about Africa's in my separate videos that are also linked in a description for you to see later. The Africa Twin 1100 that I'm referring to in this video is the one with ES in its name, which means electronic suspension, likely. So after riding all big adventure motorcycles on the market today in 2023, I would like to share my experiences with you guys. Since there are big differences in the category and so choosing the best bike for you, the one that suits you the most, is quite of a challenge now. However, there are categories in the comparison where the winner can only be one. And I'll guide you through that right now. I'll also explain why one bike is better than the other one in every given category. So stay tuned for that. And I also do not own an Africa Twin nor the KTM. So I may stay objective and be completely honest and transparent with you guys. So let's get to it. And the first point of the comparison is engine and performance. First of all, I believe that Africa Twin makes the most sense with DCT transmission, dual clutch transmission, which makes it very unique. The system works literally perfectly, I think. It is completely safe and usable in everyday use. The engine itself is an inline two cylinder, 1084 cubic centimeter engine with 102 horsepower and 105 newton meters of torque. And well, it does propel the bike okay. It is not a beast, but it also isn't sloppy if you choose one of the more responsive modes out of the ones marked with the letter S. The transmission reacts quickly and nicely drops down gears to let you quickly and smoothly accelerate. Of course, the gear changes are quicker than what a human can do likely even with a quick shifter. So there's a plus here for Honda. So yeah, it should be enough, but won't make you excited about the straight line performance. If you want that, then KTM is for you with its V2 engine with 1301 cubic centimeters of displacement with 160 horsepower, 138 newton meters of torque, and an overall insane and fantastic performance. In terms of capabilities and what it lets you experience, it completely beats Honda. Amazing flexibility with great gearing makes this thing literally almost fly. And what's even better, it makes you want to try more and more to push the boundaries. At higher RPM, it's a pure volcano with instant power delivery. The difference in power and torque figures explain that, but this bike is really the top of the top in this category here and easily and with a huge margin wins over Honda here. Africa Twin 1100 also gets quite hot on its right side and burns your leg once you stop at traffic lights. KTM can also get warm, but that's after you push it like crazy on a very hot day, which were exactly my riding conditions. Overall, it's better here than Honda as well. Not too much vibration on both bikes, yet KTM does vibrate slightly more at the highest RPM, but then everything else also tickles you inside of your body when you're experiencing this kind of performance. The next category is handling, and Honda Africa Twin 1100 isn't really very precise at low speeds. So let's say when riding in the city between the cars, slowly passing between the lines, it's rather hard to maintain the course, and so the ride gets a bit wobbly, and the bike clearly lacks control, I think. KTM thrives here in the R variant as it's in those circumstances, perfectly cooperative and neutral thanks to good balancing. Riding slowly between the cars or around any sort of obstacles is extremely easy, I think, which makes it a great bike, let me say it, to ride in the city. Now at higher speeds, so let's say that on a twisty mountain road where you typically ride over 50 kilometers per hour and significantly lean left and right, the situation totally reverses. And it's Honda 
that does the job so much better than the KTM in this R variant. The Honda wants to lean and turn. It is super easy to change directions and it cooperates with you while KTM does everything it can not to turn. Once you get it to lean, which is not easy at all, it will stay there, but getting it to do it is a struggle. And you might be surprised how much it prefers to ride just straight at higher speeds. Both are tall bikes. They are of similar weights, but they present totally different behaviors here. And this actually makes it hard to choose a winner here. And is a perfect moment uh, for me to say and introduce that it really depends on where you plan to ride. If in the city, KTM wins. If outside the city on a twisty road, Honda wins. The question may then be which one struggled more in the area that it didn't like. And it's impossible to say as both of them really weren't good out there. So uh, I'm going to declare a draw, and that's what I'm going to introduce now. And you guys tell me where you ride more. I ride more in the city, so I would pick a KTM, but I cannot say that this is all I care about. Moving to the third category and suspension, including its comfort. In this version of Africa Twin 1100, you can have electronically adjustable suspension, which I had, while KTM has manual adjustment on the R variant, and only its S a variant has it electronically adjustable with some additional functions like an anti-dive system and other cool stuff that's in their bike. That's already a point to Honda, in fact. Honda also scores in ground clearance, having 25 centimeters against KTM's 24.2. Not a big difference, but still. Front wheel travel of Honda is also one centimeter larger, 23 centimeters versus KTM's 22 centimeters. In the rear, they both have 22 centimeters. KTM in its default settings is pretty stiff and I don't find it as comfortable as I would like my motorcycle to be. And I feel that it was still better in fact and nicer than Africa Twin regardless of a mode that I would put it into. And KTM still has the manual adjustment out there that you can play with. I'm giving this one to KTM because its suspension felt more composed overall. This is despite Honda in this variant having electronic adjustment. And to justify it a bit more, let's remember that Honda may come without it, without electronic suspension, and the KTM may be bought in an S variant with that electronic suspension. It's a very different to ride, but if electronic adjustment of the suspension is super important to you, you may have it in both bikes, just like I actually have it in my office chair. Check it out in the link in the description. Pretty much every part of this thing is moving uh, electrically. Uh, it's called 7G11. Anyway, uh, I really simply didn't very much like the ride on the Africa Twin. Subjective, yes it is, but based on that, I am going to give this one to KTM. Now, what about the seat and position comfort? Africa's seat is super crazy hard. Obviously, this is not the perfect scenario on a bike that can or could serve as a touring motorcycle. It's nicely wide and supportive though. KTM's seat feels softer to me, but it seems wider in the front that makes holding the tank with your knees less comfortable. I could stay much longer on the KTM though, and I believe it's got a better seat overall. I am 183 centimeters tall or six feet tall and 88 centimeters of fixed seat height on the KTM were fine for me. Surprisingly, as it sounds really tall. Honda has an adjustable seat height in this version and you may start from 85 centimeters and raise it to 87 centimeters which all in all is a better setup for shorter riders and gives you some flexibility. Knee angle on Africa Twin is also better as in the KTM foot pegs are pretty high, surprisingly high along with a gear lever which required flexing like only a 15 or maybe maybe 16 year old girl could to drop gears. Also, the handlebar is pretty narrow in the KTM, but it doesn't seem to have actually any real disadvantages. In fact, you might expect something else, but uh, it works okay. It, it might have a little bit less control, but it's not like a night and day difference. The position is more aggressive on a KTM, which was actually stimulating for me, and I did really enjoy that. But flexibility matters here, and we may replace or modify the seats, which would make Africa Twin just as good or even better than the stock KTM, I think, pretty much easily. So this part of comfort goes to 
Africa tweet. In the case of wind protection, KTM in the R variant has none <laughs> with that wing instead of a proper windshield. Good for off-roading in case it gets dirty, but for on-road use, you'll have to get something aftermarket. Africa Twin in the Adventure Sports version has a height adjustable and a proper windshield, which provides much more protection than that thing in the KTM and the R variant. And this is obviously better for on-road use. There are no turbulences, but the adjustment system is worse. It requires you to use both hands, while in KTM, you can do it with only one. Also, Base Africa Twin has no adjustability at all, which would guarantee the loss in this category. If you replace the windshield on the KTM, it should serve better, I think. Comparing the two specific bikes that I was riding, Africa Twin 1100 Adventure Sports wins here, but as a model, KTM gives you better base for the future if you replace the windshield. Let's say that it's unresolved and we leave this point without choosing winners and calling it a draw. The next one is about the brakes and KTM has great brakes which are plenty strong with easy dozing and a rear brake that's actually useful. And you can usually stop the bike completely on its own just using the rear brake. Front brake can most of the time be operated with one finger and the only disadvantage is that front suspension dive when using that front brake. Same thing happens to Honda, but there the front brake is too weak and needs a very strong input by your right hand to work properly. So you cannot operate it with just one finger. The rear brake is okay, but overall the system is way behind the one in KTM and that is our winner. Now talking about the drivetrain, both bikes utilize chains, so both bikes lose and not win. Another draw. In KTM, there are instances in which the chains stretch prematurely, and that's not cool. But since I'm not talking about reliability and maintenance here, let's call it the draw and go ahead and move further. Fuel tank in Africa Twin can be in two sizes, either 18.8 liters in the regular Africa or 24.8 liters in America. Nah. 24.8 liters in Adventure Sports, which seems to be the more popular choice by riders. Still, you've got choices, and if you're into carrying a lot of fluids around you, Honda gives you more possibilities and takes home the win, despite KTM being also okay with 23 liters. About the weight, base Africa Twin with fuel can be very light at just 229 kilograms, yet that's a non-adventure sports version with no DCT and no electronically adjustable suspension. If you want it with the cool stuff, so adventure sports with adjustable windshield and with cornering lights, with larger tank and so on, with DCT also an electronically adjustable suspension, it tops at 250 kilograms with fuel. KTM on the other hand is around 245 kilograms with fuel. Obviously it's got no DCT and no electronic suspension in this case. So overall we may say that we can get an Africa Twin that is lighter than a KTM. Yet again, in my comparison, I'm asking a question of whether the data is more important or is it how the weight feels in this particular case? And yes, to me, the feeling matters uh, more. The Africa Twin that I was riding was uh, those five kilograms or so heavier than a KTM, but it felt way, way heavier and much more intimidating. It, I think all sorts of circumstances than a KTM would. And the difference uh, between the versions that are weighing basically the same was big enough for me to believe that a 20 kilograms lighter Africa Twin might feel then only similar to a KTM. This would automatically mean that Honda can only get as good as a KTM in that lowest a variant or a version, which is not even uh, certain, but it usually does feel heavier. So I'm picking the KTM here as a winner. In terms of tech on board both bikes, Honda can have that electronically adjustable suspension in DCT, which is a lot. KTM, on the other hand, can have keyless access with a keyless fuel cap. It can have a, in the other version, it could technically have a front radar. It does have backlit switches and a great display with cool options and animations, which give it a, the whole display gives it a, a super modern feel. Honda's display is terrible with its never ending loading time, a stupid message you need to click in order for it to disappear every time you switch the bike on, and then a display that's overloaded with information. You can use it as a touchscreen in some situations though, which is, 
beyond standard. A thousand buttons and switches on the handlebar do not exactly make using it easier, but in the end of the day, it is a difficult choice. And I think that the tech part in a form of being able to have an automatic transmission is hard to beat. And Honda needs to take credit for that despite the, the display and lack of keyless access. And so Honda wins. On the other hand, let's keep in mind that when dealing with the bike, KTM does feel more fresh. Now, one of my favorites, an exhaust sound, which is awesome in stock Africa twin with DCT. Boy, how great it sounds despite having an inline setup and not a V setup. It is brutal, it is violent and deep, which is super cool to me. The way it switches gears at high RPM makes it sound even better and sort of pushes you to keep it there and switch those gears in that highest range. It, it is truly awesome. KTM's exhaust is the size of a 10-story building and mutes all the nicest notes, leaving it barely letting any gases out. That's a shame. I mean, the sound that it produces is really lame, and it's our duty to throw it away and install a proper aftermarket exhaust that makes this engine sound absolutely fantastic and actually better than anything that we can get out of Africa. But the stock muffler is just not doing very good. At higher RPM when riding, it's better, but still not as cool as Africa. But looking at what we get with the bikes, so with no modifications and also possibly no additional trouble of making those modifications and additional purchases, Honda does win here in the sound category. Off-road wise, I cannot judge it and I don't want to, even though these bikes are having the largest claims and likely those claims are justified in this field, but they are still too heavy, especially being that tall, which makes them extremely top heavy and hard to keep up even on a flat surface. A slight lean and myself at 183 centimeters tall on top of one of these would be in trouble to not drop it. And that would be a pricey drop, by the way. If I had to choose, I would take the KTM to ride over some grass or some dirt. And that's thanks to it being so easy to control at low speeds. I wouldn't dare to take Africa anywhere, even though I know that some riders do, some super capable guys that have 10 of those and can crash them anytime they want. They can do it. It looks really cool if you look at professional riders, but they can do that with a Goldwing as well. I myself prefer to stay with dirt bikes. I used to do that and that can be truly enjoyable without the unnecessary stress of dropping a thing like that. What about the design? I'd like to ask you guys what you're thinking about these bikes here. And I believe that both of them look pretty good. I like them. They both have good proportions. Honda looks aggressive with that face and it's overall pretty slick. KTM's face is more weird, but its details may make it look more unusual and futuristic. I like KTM's design a bit more myself. And taking into account the color that it comes in for 2022, which is what you're seeing here, but also carries over to 2023 in a similar form, I overall like it more, but it's just my opinion. So without having any issues with the way Honda looks, I think we should also call it a draw with both of them being pretty fine here. Price and value category, well, Let's keep it simple. You'd have to pay 40% more for this base KTM than for a base Africa Twin 1100 with no DCT, no electronic suspension and no adventure sports version with those additional things. Is that a good price for a KTM then? I don't believe so. However, at top of the line Africa with those things that I just mentioned with base equipment, so no additional sort of options is, wait for it, 3% less than this KTM. So price-wise, you can get an Africa Twin 1100 for way less than a KTM. Would I pay 40% more for a KTM? If I wanted a new bike, then probably yes. It would be worth that for me. Now, would I pay pretty much the same for a well-specced Africa with those upgrades while still with way less performance? Absolutely not, I wouldn't. But if I wanted to have DCT, I would have no choice. And this is another really hard point to assess, especially considering that Honda is said to be reliable and KTM is said to be not very reliable. I feel like it should go to Honda, but to me personally, KTM is worth much more and should therefore win. So again, let me ask you guys, which model you think is giving us better 
value for money. If you want to know all their features, watch my full honest reviews of these bikes, which are linked in the description. But to me, that goes right now for the KTM in terms of value. Now the last category and the X factor. Honda's indestructible image is a strong point. KTM's tough guy's image is also cool. DCT in Africa is awesome, yet KTM's performance brings insane amount of fun. Both look huge and make a statement that KTM may be perceived as more original and sort of more fancy. But speaking of what can really fulfill the category of the, or, or the name of an X factor is I believe that hard to describe performance of KTM and the way it encourages you to go to the garage, start it and just ride anywhere you want. As long as it's not hardcore off-roading, but I've got this temptation ever since to just take it and ride inside a, a metro station to scare the pedestrians off and cross a sidewalk somewhere and to jump over something and take a shortcut through a park. It's pretty cool. There's simply something that I really can call X factor here that I don't really feel when riding Africa Twin. Maybe only when it switched gears near the red line, when it sounds like a V8 engine, that, that's a pretty cool part. This is also why out of these two, I would buy the KTM. It is appealing to me, even though I would be wondering which day it's going to finally break and what's it gonna be exactly that's going to break. Because of that, it may make sense to buy it new despite a crazy price tag nowadays. Honda wins in position comfort, it wins in fuel tank choices, in tech and sound categories, while KTM wins in engine and performance suspension, brakes, X-factor and weight. Wind protection is unresolved. Both bikes are also the same when it comes to drivetrain. There's also a draw in design. But KTM is my overall winner of this comparison here. And out of these two, this one is the bike that I would like to have in my garage. And to know more about both bikes and to see their full reviews, please do check the links in the description and I'll see you there.